If you're my age or older, my guess is that in your early days, Cadillac it was a grandfather's car, which he used to cruise to church on Sundays, never exceeding 40 miles per hour. He wasn't really happy going around a bend, and it had absolutely nothing to do on the track. The design was uh, uninspired. Well, things have changed quite drastically, actually. Today, they make models that are track weapons and some of the best handling sedans on the market with a design sharper than a razor blade. And let's not forget, they still offer manual transmissions in their high-performance models. Now, what I want to do in this video is show you how this happened about 20 years ago when you start to see this progress. And I want to analyze these early designs and then compare it to today's designs and show you how that evolution actually came to be. So let's jump into Photoshop here. And here we have the 2001 Cadillac DeVille. And just to look at this photo, front view right here. It looks so generic and so uninspired. It's a mix between the melted cheese era kind of on its way out and still a little sharper lines in the front end. We do have a clear definition of the front end with the clear separation between the bumper, the lower part of the grille, and then you have the top part right here. So we have this clear separation of the graphics in the front end. But is it recognizable? I guess you could say so. But if you were to sketch a car from a front view. If you were to ask a 10 year old to sketch a car from a front view, this would probably be very close to what they would sketch. A grill in the middle, a couple of almost rectangular headlights and a little bumper right here, maybe some air vents in the bottom like this. Very very typical of the early 2000s. Looking at it from a uh, slight side view, this is where you start to see that something is happening here with Cadillac. Specifically with the earlier models before 2000s, they were all very horizontal and vertical in their approach, very typical American 470s and 80s cars. But here you can see that this is this 2001 DeVille here, it doesn't really know what direction to go in. For, for example, in the front end, we have a very soft curvatures in the front end in the graphics, which I just showed you. But then the further back, the further this way we go in the car, you can see that, for example, the A pillar here is starting to become sharp. We have an, I think we have a sharper C pillar than we have an A pillar. So the further back you go, this generation kind of symbolizes the metamorphosis that Cadillac went through to get to where they are today and in the rear end I think this is actually a really good looking car from the rear I think it looks a lot more stately looking at it from a three-quarter rear view than it does looking at it from the front I think this is still a very cool car not the most exciting design but when it comes to change in a brand this model from 2001 I think this was when this started when Cadillac started to go in a different direction and build up their identity from scratch again so now let's move on on to 2005 and you can see that this is the first Cadillac CTS and just have a look at the difference in design right here this is the first Cadillac that has this sharp angular very razor sharp design with the lines and the graphics as well compare for example this headlight right here to the one we have in the first CTS it's super crisp and very rectangular and horizontal angles all over the place and it looks like this is kind of the 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 start of the CT5 style design the CT5 could be almost like a modernization of the CTS it actually kind of is when you think about it and I like this design as well and this also came as the CTS V and that that's the one you're seeing right here and they offered this in a manual transmission you can see now that this sharpness that we have in the first uh, in the 2001 DeVille now it's wrapped all around the design here all around the car from all angles you now have it wrapping the entire car in this sharp lines and crispness that Cadillac has become known for the last 10 15 years or so just have a look at the sharp shoulder line right here and then going in to the front end where the headlights every single piece of graphics in the front front end or either rectangular or I mean horizontal or vertical same goes for the grill right here and the lower part of the grill here but you still have a pretty decent separation between the top part of the graphics and the lower part creating a traditional still looking front fascia for the 2005 CTS now moving on to 2012 we're getting close to the modern cars of uh, Cadillac and I want to show you what I love about the CT5 and the CT4 at, at the end of this video but let's have 
have a look quickly at the uh, transformation from the first generation CTS to the second generation right here. It becomes a little in more interesting in the front end here. We do have very nice line flow, for example, looking at it from a straight side view. You have these lines and then you have a very horizontal front end, similar to the first generation CTS, although there's a lot more lines going on in this design. And I also like that the grill here, for example, you have the top part of the grill now is connected to the lower part, creating this long line from the top to the bottom it creates almost it, it looks a little higher in the front end just because of these two lines right here stretching the front end up and down in this direction creating a higher perception of the front end of the 2012 model and I think this looks good as well I think Cadillac at this point and today they have a super strong DN design DNA and they had it from the 2001 Cadillac DeVille and then the first CTS I think they had a meeting or something it said that we need to do something different with this model right here and that's why they created this design language which is super sharp and very very angular but what that does is you instantly recognize a Cadillac as a Cadillac and definitely nothing else it's a clean modernization of the previous generation right here we still have the same kind of graphic features but here I think they connect better with each other because they have a relationship this has a relationship with this part and then the grill in the middle has a relationship with the lower part which we kind of don't have in this first generation right here. It doesn't have the same kind of flow as the 2012 model. Now, we're gonna move in to the today's cars of Cadillac. So let's have a look at the 2021 CT5 V. And I honestly think that this is one of the best looking sedans right now out on the market. I think Cadillac has almost become the new Mercedes or the new BMW. They are having this traditional shape of a sedan. They look very stately and at the same time super sporty and aggressive with these lines here going into the grill and then stretching all the way to the starting point of this headlight right here. And you can see how big or how wide the grill is here compared to the previous generation. And what this does now, instead of stretching it out vertically, we're now stretching the front out horizontally. And just look at how much wider the CT5 looks compared to the CTS right here. And that has to do with playing around with graphics that stretch out the front end in both directions like this and having a bunch of horizontal lines doing the same thing in the bottom and throughout the front fascia. And looking at it from a slight side view, what I really like about this is the shoulder line here. We're gonna have a look at this from a slight rear view and the CT4 as well. I'm gonna show you exactly why I think these are so beautiful designs. You have this shoulder line right here stretching from one point to the other, the corner of the taillight all the way to the corner of the headlight right here, connecting the two major graphic features in the rear and in the front. Now, let's quickly have a look at the CT5 Blackwing and the CT4 Blackwing right here. Two beautiful sedans and they look almost identical if you don't know what to look for. Personal I prefer the CT4's face, but I definitely prefer the CT5's rear end. And the reason for that, if we just have a look at the rear ends here of the CT5 and CT4, the CT5 has this clear definition of the bumper and you have a normal trunk. And I think the positioning of the uh, license plate up here looks better than this. I'm not sure I like this fold that we have right here. You can see that this trunk, it looks like it's kind of folding over something and hiding something. So what I would like to have here is the same kind of treatment like we have on the bumper back here and have a clear bumper going from one point to the other and then we can play around with this area we can still have the license plate down here but I need the proper bumper in the lower part like we have up here on the CT5. Another graphic thing I really love about these cars is if you look at the taillights of these designs you can see that the shoulder line it goes in to the taillights right here and then you have a choice right here you can either go with the line right here which creates a nice line flow but you have two different versions of line flow here that you can follow you can also go down here which also creates a kind of nice line flow it doesn't really connect to anything down here but it still follows the shoulder line and on top of that with the black wing models you get this beautiful wing up top which I think suits this these sedans and it just looks really cool specifically in combination with this super aggressive diffuser which you have on the CT4 as well now let's have a look at the front view and let me show you why I prefer the CT4 face over the CT4 and it has to do with a tiny little detail that is this part right here on the CT5 what I want to do here is to connect this and have it go in to this point right here I don't want to have this 
little black piece cutting into this design I want to have a clear line going down to that point and removing this and making this blue or part of the body color other than that it's a really cool design and as I said it's this really strong brand identity for Cadillac another thing I really love about the CT5 front face is this uh, LED it looks like it's going in behind this piece that kind of cuts over it and then comes back down right here underneath it it creates a very three-dimensional feeling to the front end of the design but the reason I like the Cadillac CT4 is that little detail that, that I just show you they, they actually do that on the CT4 so have a look at this piece compare it to this piece right here now we have this line going into this part and connecting properly it doesn't have this little cut in right there that kind of it's a small thing but if I were to pick one of these that's the reason why I would pick the CT4 however I do prefer this 3d treatment of the LED here we just have a normal LED going all the way creating of course a very nice stanced look specifically if you look at this at night and you only see those two LEDs at the side it's gonna look like it's all it's a car that's a lot wider than what it actually is but I do prefer this little detail that the body panel actually covers this up and creates this 3d effect I really love what Cadillac is doing at the moment it feels like about 10 years ago they, they probably thought all right we're gonna make this decision now which they've all officially made that they're gonna go full electric within I don't know how many years maybe 10 or so but the statement is out there it feels like these two the CT5 and the CT4 Blackwing they are the final celebration of the internal combustion engine you have massive amounts of power and in combination with that you get a manual transmission which is just fantastic and it's something that I never thought I would see Cadillac do specifically not in 2022.